Hey everyone, I'm Joe Brady and I'm here to take you on a journey through color in digital photography. There's going to be a few pieces of gear to add and a handful of tips, tricks and workflow to follow in both Photoshop and Lightroom to make this all come together. In this first video, we're going to start right at capture. From the moment that you pick up your camera and press the shutter, the color in your photos is going to go through changes, most of which are going to cause loss of vibrancy and accuracy. We're going to make sure you keep the best color possible through the entire process. We'll do this by creating a custom color profile for our cameras. So the questions are, well, one, what is this profile? And two, why do I need one? When you bring your raw images into software, either Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw, the software needs a way to translate the color in the file into something you can actually see on the screen. Adobe provides a standard conversion that does an okay job to start but it requires a lot of adjustments to try to bring back the color that was in the scene. A custom profile is a snapshot of how your specific camera records color. To make this happen, you do need one of the best accessories that I think every photographer should have. This is the Color Checker Passport from X-Rite. I've got four different cameras with me today to create custom camera profiles. I've got, let's see, I've got a Canon Rebel T7i. I've got my Sony a6300 and I've got two cameras from Fujifilm. I've got a Fuji X-A7 and a Fuji X-T200. Once I have a raw file shot of the passport with each of these cameras, that's all I'm going to need. By the way, there are times when having more than one profile is a great help. We'll get into that more in further programs. So let's head outside and get started. It's time to start our journey into digital color with our photography and it's going to start at capture and that's what I'm out here right now preparing to do and that's set up my cameras for getting the best color possible right out of the camera because as each step takes place from capture to edit to output you're going to lose color a little bit each time we want to maintain the most we can and get the most accurate color possible and the start of that is a device that I've been using for I don't know 10 years or so and I don't do a shoot without it. And that's the Color Checker Passport from X-Rite. What you wanna do is with each of your cameras, you wanna take a picture of this. Now this is where most of the action happens. This is a handy item that we'll see when we get into software. And all you need to do is simply take a well-exposed picture of this. You don't wanna have any of the squares clipping. You mean they need to all have data in them. So make sure your exposure is good, but that's it. I just want the sun illuminating it in full and I'm going to get a great reference to have the best color possible. And once we bring it into software and you see how easy it is to use, I promise you, you're going to want one. So I'm going to get my cameras out and take pictures of this target. So here's my shot of the entire target. Again, I want to make sure there's sun on it. And I'm going to shoot one that's primarily the lower target as well. So that's as complicated, complicated, so that's as complicated as it is to get started. I've got pictures of this. The rest is going to take place in software. So just make sure you have a good shot. There's a lot more that this thing can do, and we'll talk about it a little bit more. So here we are in Lightroom. I've imported all of the Color Checker Passport shots from the various different cameras. And uh, let's just take a quick look. You can see from the extension, I hit the I key in Lightroom to cycle through. Uh, CR2 is a Canon extension, so these, this is the Canon Rebel. Uh, there's a shot of both targets and there's the shot just of the primary target and by the way so this is what you don't want to happen when you take a picture you want to make sure there are no shadows over it you don't want to have it looking like this this target needs to be in full sun when you're doing this so you don't want it to look like this you want it to look like that okay so here's an ARW camera ARW which is the Sony extension so this is with the Sony a6300 uh, RAF is Fuji, and you can see from the uh, I can see from the XF 18 to 55 millimeter lens. This was shot with the Fuji XT 200, and then lastly, you see the XC 15 to 45 millimeter lens. This was photographed with the Fuji Film XA7. So we're going to create profiles for each of these cameras. And we're going to see the difference between what Adobe is giving us with the standard Adobe color conversion versus having a custom color profile with the X-Rite Color Checker Passport. So let's jump back to, 
I'll take this big one of the Rebel T7i. And here's what you do. It's very simple. So all you need to do is go to File, Export with Preset, Color Checker Camera Calibration. I'm going to name it Rebel T7i. And I hit save. Notice I did not have to do anything. I did no adjusting to the file. I did no white balancing because the software knows what to do to create these profiles. It finds the target. It knows that these patches here, for example, down in the bottom row are neutral. It can white balance off of that. So this is a raw file. If you did make any changes on it, remember Lightroom doesn't build in changes until you export it to another file. So they would be ignored anyway. So uh, you can see it's cooking up here. So let's just move on. Here's one with the Sony a6300. We'll do the same thing. Export with preset. And this is going to be Sony a6300. I'm going to add the word daylight. Not, that's pretty obvious, but we'll put it in anyway. Click on save in that. You can see now it's doing two things. And we'll move along. Okay, so it's done with the first one. Notice it's saying that you have to restart Lightroom. We'll do that after we've created all four of our profiles. All right, here's the Fuji X-T200. Let's go ahead and do the same with that. Export with preset. Now, typically, you're not going to have four different brands of or four different models of camera to do it once, but hey, why not? So this is going to be the Fujifilm X-T200. Click on save there. All right, there's our second one done. That was a Sony 6300. So let's do our last one. This is going to be with the Fujifilm X-A7. All right, so after it's done creating the profiles, we'll need to restart Lightroom. And then we're going to come back in here. I want you to see how amazing the color change is going to be. All right, and there's our last one. So we're going to, as soon as it's done, we're going to restart Lightroom. So let's quit Lightroom. All right, so I've restarted Lightroom. Now let's go ahead and see how our new profiles affect the color response for each of our cameras. Now we do that in the develop module, so we click on that. And right at the top of the basic panel, you see a profile called Adobe Color. If you don't have a custom camera profile, that's what you get. So if I click on here, I'm gonna to go to Browse. And if we scroll down, notice, look, here's the Canon Rebel T7i. It doesn't show me the other profiles I just created. It doesn't show me the Sony camera, the Fuji cameras, because the profiles are specific to the camera. And the software knows from the metadata in the file which profile goes with which camera. So I'm going to click on the star here to make it one of my favorites. Drum roll, please. Watch this. So here is the shot that we got with the Adobe Color Profile. Watch what happens when we assign our custom profile now. So we come down and just choose the Canon Rebel T7i and look at all those colors change. We got our colors back. What this is telling us is that the Adobe Standard Profile uh, coming into Lightroom and in Adobe Camera Raw as well for that matter is costing us a lot of color. Particularly these three blues, this little triangle here, the blues, this kind of uh, eggplant color and this dark pink. Watch one more time as we do that. I'm seeing it here, and also I'm seeing it on the red and the green. So a huge difference. And what's cool is you can then select all the images in your shoot. In this case, I just have these two here. So because uh, that's Sony, there's Fuji. Uh, I can just now click on Sync. I'm going to check None. I want the Treatment and Profile, the Process Version, and the Calibration. Click Synchronize. And what the software does is it applies these settings to all of them. Now, by the way, if your white balance was screwed up in your camera, let's say your white balance was something like that, which is what you'd get if you shot in daylight and you had it set for tungsten, come over here, hit the white balance picker, and there's the actual true color. So one more time, that's what Adobe would have given us or did give us. Look at the custom profile. So let's do the same thing and let's see what happens with uh, the Sony. Uh, that's the one we didn't want. Let's go a nice big one so we can uh, see it clearly. Okay, so again, we go to Adobe Color and go to Browse. Scroll down, there's the Sony 6300 Daylight. I hit Close, and again, one more time, Adobe Color, and again, notice there's the 6300, and look at the profile again. So let's go ahead and zoom in a bit. Uh, let's go one to two. And we'll zoom in on this bottom target <clears throat> again so you can see before there's what the custom profile there's what we were getting so there seems to be a theme here 
that consistently the Adobe Standard Color Profile is costing us a lot of blues and, and colors that have a lot of blue in it, well, including this eggplant and this pink. Also the red and green to a lesser degree. If you stare just at the red, stare at the red patch, there's the Adobe Profile. It's a little bit weaker, but the blues are dramatic. And then let's move over to our zoom out here. Let's take a look. This is the Fuji X-T200. I can white balance pretty much off of any of these. So the white balance was good. But again, the profile. We go to Browse. Here's the X-T200 profile. Hit Close. And again, there's the Adobe Color Profile. And there's the Custom Profile. Wow, on this one, it's even more dramatic with a lot of colors. That's interesting. Um, I'm seeing it in the yellows, the reds, this kind of salmon color. Well, wow, almost all of the colors. Not only is the color, but the saturation has changed. So what this tell is telling me is that the Adobe Color Profile for this particular Fuji camera is not very good. And if you are not creating custom profiles, look at all the color you're giving up. Let's uh, move on to our last Fuji camera here. We'll do this nice big one here. Let's go over to browse one more time. And notice, even though it's a Fujifilm camera, since it's a different model, it, it's got a different profile. So let's hit close again. Again, here's the Adobe standard. We can check our white balance also. That was good. And look at that dramatic change between what we were getting with the Adobe Color and the custom profile for the camera. So what this is telling me so far is all cameras are going to really benefit and get a lot better color if you just go through this simple step of creating a custom camera profile. And certain cameras, and again, I don't have enough data points to confirm this, but so far from what I'm seeing, uh, the Fuji cameras really benefit. Uh, the Adobe Color Profile is just not that good. It's costing you a whole bunch of color compared to what you get back by creating a custom camera profile. We'll go into color editing uh, in Lightroom much deeper as we continue through our courses, but just to show you real quickly, here's our Adobe Color conversion of this shot in a near Valley of Fire in uh, Nevada. Let's go ahead and I'll do Monument Valley, which is pretty close, and look what happens to the colors. We got the color back. So again, here's the Adobe conversion, very flat and weak. And our custom profile from out in that part of the country brings us so much more color back. Here's another one. This is just an unedited image. It's actually part of a panoramic. But again, here's the Adobe color. And look what, our, look what happens to our skies. Look how we get our blues back compared to that Adobe color. Dramatically different. So I hope that made clear how important these things are. Custom camera profiles, easy to do, incredibly powerful. It will make your color editing so much easier because once you create one, assign it to all the images that you took in that shoot, and you're done. You've got perfect color to start with. Now that you've seen how much color is being returned to you with the Color Checker Passport, I know you want to have one. This has saved me hours of time when I edit my images. And having the best color possible at the start is the first step to a color workflow that ensures consistently great color results. The next step, which is possibly the most important one in our journey through a color workflow, is to make sure our screens are showing the best color possible. This involves a bit of hardware to calibrate our monitors. So join me in the next video as we do a monitor calibration, and within there, I'll follow up with a tutorial on color editing an image in preparation for print. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.